Hello, good day. Welcome back to JWC. In this video, we're going to be doing three things. First, we're going to see how to take some data and Base64 encode it. Then we're going to see how to take uh, Base64 encoded data and decode it so we can recover the data. And finally, we're going to see how if we have a, we're given a JWT, which means that we have the header, the payload, and the signature, how we can verify that the header and payload is valid using the signature. So without further ado, let's jump in. So let's see what we have in our directory. So I have a go mod file and you can see it's very simple. It doesn't have anything, just basic module. I use go mod in it and I give it a name. And uh, now we're going to create our first example directory with our main.go file and Typical Go thing, um, main.go must be in the package main. And then I'm going to start off by putting a main function. Our first example is going to be how we take some data and base64 encode it. So here is a, an example JSON document. Imagine that this is the data I want to exchange for a user who authenticate to my authentication service, right? So this data needs to be base64 encoded to become the payload of my JWT. Remember, JWT has three parts, so this is just one part of the JWT. So I'm going to use the base64 encode package, which is part of the encoding package, right? So base64 is a sub package. Now I could create a new encoder. So like think of it when you have JSON and um, you have a new JSON decoder or JSON encoder. But here I'm going to use standard encoding. Now, when you click on standard encoding, you can see that a standard encoding is simply a default that is given to you using new encoding function that pass a encoding standard. So what is the encoding standard? So let's pause here and look at this. The encoding standard is essentially a string of the characters that are going to be allowed in for encoding. Now, as you know, Basic to for encoding, like I mentioned before, really use ASCII character and numeric character. And I mistakenly said all it was dot in it and slash. That was it wrong. Um, I did not verify it before. Thanks to a viewer who caught that mistake and said, hey, you could have just Googled it and you would see that oh, this is what the encoding string looks like, or these are the valid characters for basic to for encoding. So it's the letters A through Z, uppercase and lowercase. So that's going to give you 26 letters times 2, because we're using uppercase and lowercase. We have 0 through 9. And here, for standard encoder, we also include plus and slash. What is not shown here is well, some rules around basic to orbit encoding, which it must be, the resulting string must be a multiple of 4. So if it's less than 4, then a equal sign is added. Now, that's viewer also provided a simple example in the comments on the last video. So that's part two of the video. So thank you, thank you. Thanks for keeping me honest. Pretty much this is what I want. I want engagement on the video. If you see something you like, let me know. If you see error or correction, something I could do better, please let me know. And then you can see on line 118 here in the source, source code, there's also URL encoding instead of standard encoding. And URL encoding is pretty much the exact same as the standard encoding, except it removes or doesn't allow slash and the reason why is because urls do contain slashes so you wouldn't want a slash in your encoding to be misinterpreted as a path separator in your url so url encoding does not include slash all right so let's go back now and see now we can print out a few things we can print out our data we can print out the payload which is our data as base 64 bit encoding now we can run our code and we can see here, um, sure enough, our payload uh, is encoded. And notice that equal sign at the end. So this tells us that the, when we did the encoding, we did not have a multiple of four. So an equal sign was added to make that a multiple of four. Okay, so create a temporary file. Here's the, what we encoded into our file. But now I want to see if we wanted to send the same data and we were to use the JWT.io website and paste this in as our data, what would it create as the payload, encoded payload? So let's paste this in. And as you can see, even though I'm reformatted on the website here by taking out you know, space and so on, 
um, to make it look a little bit neater. Notice it does not change the encoded value, which is in the middle there, the purple. So, okay, so clearly it doesn't care about space. So let's copy this. And no, that is very different from what I have. Not even the first part or any part of it. It is shorter, and so there's something that's happening. So I hinted at it before. So once we were removing the spaces on the website, it did not change the value. So that tells you that the website was stripping out spaces and then encoding. So let's do that in our second example. So we'll copy and paste our first example. We'll, of course, rename the directory. And then what we want to do is use JSON compact because we have a JSON value as our data. So if we use JSON compact, it can remove any extra um, spaces that are not necessary for, you know, the meaning of the data because we can take out the spaces between the field and the value that doesn't change that this field has this value now for readability we have a space there but it's not necessary and we certainly don't need them to be on separate lines so we could remove things like new lines also so once again we'll call json compact give it our um data and we also need to give it bytes buffer so we can create a new bytes step buffer and if we do that, now the JSON compact function can write our source data, which is a slice of JSON data that is human readable and nicely formatted, pretty formatted, into the buffer. Now, it returns an error, but I'm not going to check for error because there really shouldn't be any error trying to um, compact this. And then, once since it's written in the buffer, we can retrieve the bytes from the buffer by simply calling buff.bytes. And now we can print out an extra line saying basically we have our data um, that is pretty format. We have our data that's compact to see what that looks like. And then we have our payload, which is going to be our compact data. Okay. And now we can see that this looks very different. There's our pretty format data. There's the compact one with those spaces like missing between removed from between fields and the new lines. So between, between fields. So we don't need that. And now if we copy this, and you can see already, this looks more like what we have on from the JWT website. And so if we paste this, we can see that sure enough, the end and most of it matches. I didn't copy this properly, but if I copy it properly this time and I paste it, you're going to see it matches exactly what we generated in Go. So this tells us that we can generate a valid payload, which also means we can generate a valid header if we were to do the compact. So let's move on to decoding base 64-bit values. So this time we're not going to copy our code. We're going to start with a new um, main that go just because um, decoding is slightly different and we don't want to reuse the data that we already have. So that's fine. We're going to pretend that we don't have the data to begin with. So let's get our main going. And so what should we work with? Well, let's go get the sample JWT from um, JWT.io. And that is going to be the entire string that is generated. We copy it, and we're going to paste the entire JWT. So this includes everything. Okay. So what do we know? We know that our JWT has three parts that, are, that are, is delimited by a period. So what we should do is have some um, way of splitting our JWT. And we can split it by using the string that splits function. So let's just have some strings here that we're going to use to print out the different sections as we process it. And the first thing we're going to do is split our JWT using a period. And so we should end up now with three parts. And we can loop over each part and decode it. Like we're actually going to print out not only the name of the, part, the section where the part of the JWT that we're working on, but we'll print out what that value looks like in coding. And now we'll decode it. Okay, so we need on line 19, we need to say print F instead of print because we have a formatted string. Okay, so this is it. So we run it, and here we can see for header, that's the encoded value, and there's the decoded value, and that's correct. Again, it's compact. Notice it's not pretty printed with, you know, spaces or new line. Similarly, our payload, uh, that's the payload, and we know it looks familiar. And then there's the data, and that is also correct, um, compact JSON. 
Finally, we have the signature, and that's a signature of value encoded, but decoded, it's a bunch of weird characters. And that is because, and this is why you'd want to base64 encode something, because whenever the signature was, the, the calculated signature has some binary data or non-printable characters, so trying to print it out to the screen, that is why it looks the way it does. So we can um, fix our code here by just saying we're not going to print out the signature decode it because you know it just looks like garbage so, so let's move on to the last part of this video where we verify the signature so we have our example 4 directory which we copied from our example 3 application and we're going to change it a little bit so what we can do is we can create the individual sections as variables and the reason why we would want to do that you want to be able to specify what the signature is and also specify what the data that signature signature was computed over. So we're going to name each part of the JWT that we're going to split. So we know the first part is the header and so that's part zero. The second part is the payload and that's parts index at one. And finally, the signature is at parts index two. Now we want to compute the signature over the header plus the payload, including that dot, so or the period. So this is our data that we want to compute the signature over. We're not going to be looking over anything, so we can get rid of that. The only thing we need to do is ask, is this a valid JWT? And the way we know it's a valid JWT is if the signature is valid. So we're going to ask the question, is this signature valid for this data? And we can do that by calling a function. We're going to write called verify signature, where we pass in the data which is the edit plus the payload, we pass in the signature we got, and then we're going to pass in the shared key. Remember, our signature is encrypted with a shared key. So what is our shared key? Our shared key is very secure, very that secure. If you remember on the JWT website, that's the key we use. So now uh, let's write this function. So the very first thing to note is that our function is going to take these three inputs and then simply return a boolean. So what, this, what does it need to do? The first thing we need to do is decode the signature. Remember, our signature is base64 bit encoded, so we can send it in um, the HTTP header, for example. Now, what's interesting here is that even though it's base64 bit encoded, which one of the encoding standards did it use? Did it use the standard? encoding or URL or raw URL, which one, raw standard, we don't know. So the first thing we're going to try is to decode our signature using standard, using standard encoding. And if we can decode it, we'll continue. Otherwise, if we can decode it, for example, because the encoding standard is invalid, we will return false. And then, of course, we'll have to print out a message saying why we couldn't decode it. The next thing we want to do is we want to compute a signature for ourselves. If we can compute the same signature as given to us, then we can check if both are equal. And if they're equal, then it's valid. So we'll create a new HMAC, and this HMAC computes the checksum over the data we write to it. And what we can do is use it like an IO writer and just write data to it once we create it. But we have to provide it with some um, configuration, and that is, what encryption algorithm we want to use, what encryption algorithm we want to use, which in this case is SHA-256, and of course, the key to use for encryption. Once we have that, we're going to write our data, which is the header and the payload separated by that period. We're gonna write that. Then, if we can write that successfully, we can get the checksum for that data. I know you could keep writing more data, but we don't have more data to write, so we can simply ask for what is the checksum now for this data that we've written so far. And so we do that on line 46. That gives us our signature. What we can do is ask HMAC to compare if they're equal. Now, I don't think you should try and use like bytes that compare or anything like that. You should definitely use the tools that they give you. And here, there's equal um, function on the HMAC package, so we should use that. So if these two signatures, the one that we decoded from the JWT and the one we computed are equal, then it means that our JWT is valid. Because remember, we're using the shared key. We're the service that received this JWT, and we have a shared key with the encryption service. 
the user doesn't have the shared key. So if they manipulate the JW tree in any way, then it's the signature fail. So let's um, run the code. Now we can see it says fail. And notice it's telling us why it failed. It says illegal 64-bit data. So this is failing to decode it. So certainly this doesn't seem to have used the standard encoding. So let's try raw standard encoding and see if that works. And when we run it, you can see it says the signature is true. Now I did some research and it seemed that the recommended way is actually to use raw standard URL um, encoding instead of just raw standard. So I'll just switch this code to use it that instead. All right. And so as you can see, when I run it, it still shows that the signature is valid. Now, what if we were to use a slightly different key? Like let's say we did not have the key. You can see the signature says that is false. And even if the character or just one character has changed, even if it's the same length key, notice it has to be the exact same value for it to be successful. Um, we can try manipulating a different part of our JWT to see if we can trick it. And we will see that if we change any part, just one character, even if we shorten it or just add a character or flip a character, the same thing happens. The signature is invalid because that signature is computed by the security service would not match any signature we compute over the header and payload if it's changed in any way. And so you can play around with this. Um, you can see we play around a little bit with this by adding some character, removing some characters, flipping characters, that sort of thing. So we've covered the three things we set out to do, which was in this video, we wanted to show that we can use Go to base64 encode some data and generate a base64 encoded string. We want to show it so we can take a base64 encoded string and decode it to recover the data. And finally, we want to show that we can verify our JWT by checking the signature. And so we've done those three things. If you made it this far in the video and you like what you see and you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you. Regardless of whether you subscribe or not, I would appreciate it if you just thumbs up the video. Um, that helps with the YouTube algorithm selecting the videos to show to others. And I would really appreciate that. And finally, if you or anyone you know is in the market for Tesla product, please consider using my Tesla referral link for yourself or your friends, anyone you know, you can give it to them. I would really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care, stay safe, see you in the next video. Bye.